Hey gang, welcome back to another video. So one of the questions I get asked pretty regularly is what is the best glue for foam? And while I definitely have my favorite, I thought it might be interesting to test some of the most often mentioned glues, plus a new addition, to see which one comes out on top. They'll be judged based on the following criteria. Ease of use, cure time, strength, carvability, and price. And hopefully by the end of this video, we can say once and for all, what is the best glue for foam? So let's get to it. If you've watched any of my tombstone videos, you'll know that my go-to glue is the white variety of Gorilla Glue. So that'll be the first glue I'll test. Followed by Liquid Nails Project Adhesive, which I've never used, but I've heard it suggested quite a bit over the years. The third competitor isn't a glue, but rather Great Stuff Expanding Foam, which is a favorite of many foam workers, and so I figured it needed to be included. And the final is a new one to me, and isn't designed for foam at all, but has received some good reviews, and that's Tightbond 3 Wood Glue. Now that we've covered the glues, let's get down to the first category, Ease of Use. I've always felt that there should be as little friction as possible in the creative process, and that starts with gluing and cleanup. The liquid nails can be applied straight from the tube, but the Gorilla Glue is water activated, and so to get the best performance, I'm going to spray the foam with a bit of water before applying the glue. Then they both get topped with a second piece of foam and a 1-2-3 block, which weighs just under 2 pounds for an added bit of pressure. I'll repeat this step for the Great Stuff Expanding Foam, which must be shaken for 60 seconds before application. And its nozzle has to be cleaned with acetone immediately after use, as well as the Type Bond 3 wood glue. And with everything labeled, here's how they ranked. Type Bond 3 was the easiest application in cleanup, since it flows very easily from the bottle and cleans up with water, although in this test there was no need for cleanup. In second place was Gorilla Glue. It required the extra step of wetting the glue surface before application, so it was still easy, but there was a little bit of that friction I mentioned with its use. In third place is Liquid Nails. The application was on par with the previous glues, but the cleanup was messy and needed to be taken care of relatively soon after use. In last place is Great Stuff. The application was relatively easy, but immediate cleanup was required with acetone to prevent the nozzle and can from becoming unusable. Next up is Cure Time. This is another one of those friction points I mentioned earlier. The faster an adhesive sets up, the sooner I can get on to my next step of the build. So after 10 minutes, I checked to see how each was doing, and as you can tell, all but the Gorilla Glue were still movable. So I checked back in 30 minutes, and at that point, only the Liquid Nails was still pliable. So at this point, I decided to remove Liquid Nails from further testing, since having to wait more than 30 minutes is a major friction point in the creative process, which now leaves us with the Gorilla Glue, Great Stuff, and Type Bond 3. And after round two, Here's how they rank. Gorilla Glue was the first to set up at around 10 minutes, although the manufacturer suggests a 24 hour cure time, which puts it in first place for this round. In a close second place was Great Stuff, which seemed fully set at 30 minutes, although it's not fully cured for 12 hours. And in third place is Type Bond 3, which felt set at the 30 minute mark, but isn't completely cured for 24 hours. The next thing I wanted to test was hold strength. Now the odds that any of your foam creations would be under this type of stress is highly unlikely, but I was curious to see how easy or difficult it would be to pull the foam apart after 24 hours. So I got to it and found that great stuff would not budge under a decent amount of force. The Gorilla Glue was quite similar. The hold was strong and felt like it would withstand most bumps and knocks. The Type Bond 3, however, didn't pass the test, which makes complete sense. Any water-based glue is going to need airflow to cure, and because the foam isn't porous, the glue couldn't set up properly in the middle, leaving just the outer edges to do all the work. So that's the end of the line for Type Bond 3. 
It's just not designed for this use and shouldn't be held to the same requirements as the other adhesives. And after round three, we've got Gorilla Glue and Great Stuff tied for first place. Both held very strong and felt nearly identical when trying to pull them apart. With only two foaming adhesives left, I thought it was worth seeing how they reacted to some basic shaping, as well as checking for any gaps between surfaces. First up is Great Stuff. As you can see, there's about a 16th inch gap between the pieces. It's not ideal, but it's not a deal breaker either. And when I took my rasp to it, there was no resistance and it seemed to carve just like the rest of the foam. I did notice that there were some gaps where the foam didn't reach, so I wanted to give it another grip test and after a bit of force was able to pry the pieces apart, although the pink foam did snap before I was able to separate the two pieces. Next up was Gorilla Glue. The gap here was much smaller, about a 32nd of an inch, and just like great stuff, was easy to shape with a rasp. But after another pull, I was able to separate the pieces of foam to expose much bigger gaps. So while the Gorilla Glue does expand, you need quite a bit more of it to achieve the same level of coverage as great stuff. After round four, we've got great stuff in first place with Gorilla Glue just barely behind. Not having to fill as many gaps in your finished piece is going to save you time, so Great Stuff pulls out the top spot for this round. The last, and possibly most important, comparison is price. Great Stuff comes in at $0.36 cents per ounce, while Gorilla Glue is $3.34 an ounce. Quite a difference in price, but Great Stuff comes out on top in this category. So after all the tests and a quick count of the ratings, the final tally has White Gorilla Glue with 18 stars, and Great Stuff a close second with 16. And after all the testing, I think it's safe to say that either glue would be good for your foam projects. Now each has its own strengths and weaknesses, but overall are both great for gluing foam to itself. Well that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>